How should one incorporate strength training into marathon training or half marathon training? Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You need it. Very important. You need it because it's gonna help. It, everyone's biggest worry is health, right? You wanna get through the race healthy. If you don't do the strength training, you don't do the miles, guess what, it's not gonna happen. I mean, it's like, it's just one of those things where, does it have to be significant? No, you don't, you don't need to go to the room and do 200 pound deadlifts or you know anything insane like that you, you don't need to become a crossfit it's all about the gains you know you don't have to be a crossfitter or anything like that body weight work is enough if you build it in early you don't have to worry later on about yeah. injury stuff so like if you're in the early stages of base building and everything else integrate it just be smart about it don't like you know do a super hard workout you know running one day and then the next day go do a ton of strength and then go right back into you know doing some other stuff you had that happen already once and it's sort of like you go to do the the next thing and you're like oh god my legs there is nothing that's going to work <laughs> ever again this how many all. days a week should people be doing strength training too at least two and what days should they be doing them on days of like a harder run or should they be doing it on an off day i prefer to do i to have everybody do it if you're going to do hard stuff do it all in a day you know just control what you're doing if you're going to really focus on if you're going to lift heavy then back it down in the workout that you do when you run and vice versa you know if you're going to do a hard running workout you can still do strength stuff but and not kill yourself you know stick to body weight stuff and then do your workout at night and you should still be able to pull it off pretty well yeah and then just make sure that you recover the next day you got to have the time for your muscles to settle heat and humidity I got oh, like, yes. so many questions about running in heat and humidity. I'm going to read one. What is your advice for training in the heat and humidity? I'm talking Houston, Texas heat and humidity. Oh. My long runs inside, question mark, short runs outside, and then jump on some cross training. Hydrate, 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 and use proper nutrition for long runs. I'm open to all options. Thank you so much. Move. There's about, <laughs> that's a terrible advice. <laughs> uh, Texas is tough. Humidity is tough. One of the things I will say about humidity is control your expectations if you are supposed to run at x pace you get outside and you're sitting in at 70 percent or better it will be harder to do and it will cause you to work that much harder to get there so fatigue is going to be up and it's going to be a lot harder to get there um, don't kill yourself trying to do it like control the expectations know that if it is really really high that you just have to take it a little bit easier so like if i'm taking off and I want to do nine minute nine minute miles for mm. like five miles. Mm. Do I just add like thirty seconds as my expectation? Yeah, start at fifteen and see where it goes. Like, and then don't be beat yourself up. If don't you do beat it yourself up because it, or slower. Yeah, yeah, because it's which I do. <laughs> I mean, start at fifteen seconds and then see where it is. I mean, it's not too much slower, but you know, honestly, when you're in any run, a little bit taking your foot off the gas can feel amazing. And yeah. you don't want to go so far that it's so easy that you kind of lose it. Or that, you know, it's just the whole workout itself gets lost. But um, uh, other things for heat and humidity. Soak yourself down all the time, if possible, as often as possible. What does that mean? Like, if you have a bottle with you, like, it's, if you're in Texas, there's probably not a lot of places you're going to go where you, you don't bring water on the run. You know, uh, one, of, one of the guys that I used to train with, he, when it was really hot out, like, kind of like today... He would put, uh, he would soak a tube sock and fill it with ice cubes and tie it around his neck. Ice in the hat's okay. Um, your neck is better. It actually will help cheat. I'm not putting anything around my neck. It, it helps you cheat <laughs> the, your brain a little bit and makes you think that, the, that you're a little bit cooler than you are. So you can actually push through a little bit better. What's your advice on like even breaking up? Like say you have to do a 13 mile long run. Can you do six outside and then seven, seven on a treadmill? You can. Just make sure that the incline's up a little bit. Like 0. 0.5? Like one. Like 0. 0.7? I'm just kidding. How about a half to one? How about that? I hate the treadmill. I hate the treadmill. I haven't been, I've been on the treadmill once I would rather like run the through the fiery years. depths of hell. You saw the pictures. We ran in the blizzard. We ran in the blizzard this year because I won't go in this high. <laughs> but breaking breaking it up is fine. I mean, if it's if it's one of those days. I know people who do all their training on treadmills. Yep. And they're fast they're as fine. you know what. Shout out to Michelle. <laughs>